Okay, here's an official tour of the vault. Over here we have this cabinet thing that came with the house or the vault. Uh, stuff full of mangas that I couldn't sell over the years, I guess. So that'll probably be there for the rest of my life. Good times. And over here, all these boxes are filled with pops. There's 36 in each one. This is about half of what I got. There's another half upstairs. So it's well over a thousand pops. In this book is a list of most of them. See how, like box 15, there's a piece of paper that corresponds. It says box 15, it tells you every single pop that's in box 15. Yeah, that was a lot of work. Over here is our, well that's my washer and dryer. It's not for sale. <laughs> here are some board games that we have extras of. There's a lot of stuff. And over here are figures and statues and whatnot. And uh, came out of the shop because it was just sitting there collecting dust. And there's always something new coming in. <clears throat> Here's where Chris is working on the sortings. Don't mind the ashtray. Smoke is bad, kids. I know. <clears throat> now we get to the fun stuff. This is all DC, all in order. And a bit down there. And there's more figures up top, of course. Then we get to the marble section. All marble. All in order. <laughs> A to Z. Quite a lot of marble. More figures, of course. Lots and lots of figures and stuff. And over here, this is where it gets a bit tangly. Because this goes right to the floor, too, by the way. This is all the independence. Your image, your valiance, your dark horse, your whatever's. Not in order. Maybe one day it'll get in order. Months of just working on DC and Marvel. This is the last of what has to be organized into the boxes there. Then we might actually get people to come over and have a look. If you have one of the selected few. Here are, are trades that have, I don't know, we one day end up in our discount bins. Or not. Depends if I like it or not. And this is more trades as well. And these are boxes he's working on. These are the comics that are not Marvel DC. And at least he's sort of organizing them a bit, right? And last but not least, me. That's me from 17 years ago. Well, I still had a glimmer of hope in my eye. <laughs> Look at that smile. That's from the first free comic book day in 2002. Yep, yeah, made the cover and everything. Maybe one day I'll read the article. <laughs> well, won't be tonight, though. All right, there you go. That's a 10 cent tour of the basement, I guess, of the vault. And, uh, all right. Let's see welcome to another episode of The Vault. Where me and Steve sit at the round table and we talk about the most important thing in life, comic books. All right. All right, Steve. This, all right. This week's topic is some of your favorite scores. Ooh, all right. You can go first and name one. Well, I'll tell you, I was at uh, the old Afterwards bookstore, sadly lamented now, folks, and I found in their small little bins, they had, I believe it was 25 cent bins, I believe it was. Yeah. I got Hulk 181. That's a really good price for that. Oh, so 25 cents is a good price for 181. That's Hulk. cover price. That's good, that's exactly. Yeah, you're gonna like that one. Oh, I was really thrilled. I looked at it and was like, okay, I'll just put that in the middle of the stack. What year is that, you figure? Oh, that was about, ooh, I say good at least 12 years ago. Jesus, what about them? Yeah, it was pretty good. It was, it was sort really? of the end of their comics, because you used to have the comics, and then I guess the all sort of business sort of went your way in terms of people selling comics, because yeah. you're downtown comics. Exactly. Well, never got that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, for me, well, I think my favorite score was, it would have been spring 88, so you're talking probably April or May, and I was in grade 12. I was out of school, right? 
And Friday I always had a thing, because I went to Booth, huh? I go down over the hill, huh? and I check out Second Page Bookstore, and then I'd do my rounds, I'd hit the uh, afterwards like you did, yep. and, um, and go to Yancey Street, huh? so I'm in Second Page, and I'm buying a couple comics, and then the woman working there, I say to her, I was like, there's a couple comics there behind the counter. Like, can I see those? Sir? And I, I already thought they were going to be the reprints, sir. But no, no, it was uh, Amazing Spider Man 121, 122, Death of Gwen, Ooh. Death of the Green Goblin, comics I never see, ever, right? And uh, so I say to her, I was like, oh, can I buy these? Like, how much are these? And she said, oh, I have to get my husband the price when we just got them. And, if you come back Tuesday, we'll have a price for you, and you can have a look at them, right? All right. Let me tell you, folks, 3 o'clock <laughs> Tuesday after school, it was like, beeline down, down over the hill. Couldn't go down quick enough, right? And she um, shows me two comics, and they were in nice shape. We're talking like 6.5, 7, right? maybe even 7.5, you know. They're, they're decent, decent looking books, right? No tears, no writing, none of that, right? And it was like, I looked at the price, it was $8 each. And I was like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then she says, oh, and by the way, this week we have 25% off. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? $6 each? <laughs> I was out of a cloud when I was walking home. <laughs> right? I was so happy. <laughs> uh, I wish I never sold those comics. I, I really oh. love those comics. And i tell you something, they're, they're worth that price of the Marvel Tales, let alone yeah. the originals. Well, you can't even find the Marvel Tales. You can't even find the Marvel Tales. It's really, it's really yeah. interesting. Are you going to have any more? Oh, absolutely. Actually, i got two more. Yeah. Uh, one was, I remember getting, uh, well, I had in my hands uh, Conan the Barbarian number one when I was at the escape hatch. Yeah. And I went up, it was in the, he had 10 cent bins. Yeah. And I said, and Doug looked at it and I said, oh, it's mint condition, Conan, but I can't, I can't sell it for yeah. number one. But I did get number two to 10 of the X-Men. For ten cents each. That's pretty original. Good price. That's pretty good. That's less than cover price. That's less than cover price for number two to ten original. Yeah, yeah, you won't see those prices anymore. Not unless you're going to uh, back in time. Yeah, yeah. Or someone's completely crazy. <laughs> well, <laughs> all comics for a dollar. <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There's some pretty good stuff. <laughs> all right, for me, it's not like a super score, but it really changed my view of comics. Because I always had to say, I go to afterwards, and they always had their comics for a quarter each, right? Yeah. You know, and it's like, if I saw, I don't know who it was, I think there was one random person who was just going there all the time, and just, I guess they bought their comics, and then once they read them, they just dumped them down afterwards, right? So, if I saw something in good shape, and, you know, I was like, oh, I'll buy it, right? So, it's I went down there, and I bought just a bunch of, there was a whole bunch of swamp things there, right? And, you know, I was reading them, reading them, and then, I get to issue 20, right? Actually, it wasn't so much 20, because that was sort of the end of a story arc, right? Even though it was first Alan Moore story, right? But I had 21 to 29. I remember I was sitting in the basement, and I was like, oh, true. I was like, these are incredible. <laughs> like, it was so different from the comics I had been reading, right? It was just like a new level. Yeah, one, right? no capes. And it was just so good. And, of course, I guess we started collecting Swamp Thing after that, <laughs> this guy right but yeah it was such a good score and sure enough like three four months later they were like the hottest books you know in the country right you know you wouldn't even find them for under twenty dollars right so I thought that was an excellent score right and you got another one yeah I got one more I t actually it's it's a homage really yeah uh when I was a little boy and I don't know how many of the old timers here are watching our show but uh do you remember a, a little store called John D Snow's yeah, it's before my time. Like, I only went when my parents took me at that age, and we didn't go to John D. Snow's. John D. Snow's <laughs> was across from uh, City Hall yeah. downtown. And uh, they had a, the man was there in the back, in the, behind the counter, and he would have a stack of comics. Yeah. And they're in rubber bands. Yeah, yeah. And they were selling them for 10 cents each. Yeah. But the trick was, is that he always had more stacks behind. Yeah. But he would never, ever... Put a, pick up another stack 
until every single one of that first pack was gone. Well, you smart, see? That's and what so I should do. Me, that's what you should do. So me, <laughs> you're, not, you're not getting that spawn there. number 300 until number 299 goes. Yeah. So I remember going down my, my bro, to, my, to my brothers and Peter Collins, and we'd, go down, and we'd be like, okay, we know that there's gold right behind them. We've yeah. just got to get rid of you know, Haunted Tank and Sergeant Rock. Yeah, Someone's yeah. got to buy these in order to get to the gold, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we all pulled our money to get the good stuff, oh, nice. and it was absolutely wonderful. John D. Snows was uh, an institution for so many years yeah. in, in our fair city, and uh, when it went, it, we took a took a piece of Newfoundland history with it. Oh, a lot of people remember that place. I've never been there. Before. My first comic shop was the Escape Hatch. Escape Hatch was wonderful. Which and I would love to go back in time to visit, revisit, <laughs> believe me. Doug, what's on the wall? Oh, oh yes, yeah. I'll take two of each. <laughs> now I can finally afford these comics. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bucks for Spider-Man number one. Sold. Done and done. Sold and sold. Right? Oh, what was that? $200 for uh, FF number five for Dr. Doom? Sold. <laughs> God, yeah, every book you can imagine. Yeah. He had every book, and there was always a story he told me that there was a guy in St. John's that he could never sell anything to because he already had everything. Yeah. I never did find out who that person was, but Doug said, I have all these comics, but this other fella, he's got everything. I never found out who it was. It's so like a mythical it's collection a, that's in the city somewhere. Absolutely, and if this man died and left all his comics in his attic, what a score that would be. Well, he must be old now. He's got to be old. I'm not old yet. Not yet. Fingers crossed. I'd love to see this. <laughs> Stay open. Stay <laughs> open. And for me, the last thing is, it wasn't in one day, but I, mean, I went to afterwards bookstore all the time. Right? Yeah. You know, every now and again, you just find something like deadly. Right? Like, I remember finding like X-Men 100. And I was like, oh, 25 cents. It's old. All right? X-Men 110, same thing. Quarter. Right? And uh, I think one of my favorites was... Uh, the Punisher miniseries number one. All right, and we're looking at it. it's one of my favorite covers too. That just Mike Z just yeah, pops Mike out. Yeah, Mike Z. He's such good. a good story too. Right? Unfortunately, the other four parts weren't there, but well, I got the first one for a cooler, and I was really happy with that. I'm very happy. All right, well, I guess I'll do it for another week, Steve. Yeah. All right, uh, keep tuning into the vault, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, see you in here one day. Yeah. God bless, guys. Thank All right. you. All right. Bye, guys.